Hello boys and girls. It is good to be with you today. I am teacher Sankita from Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Raja Ali which is located in Kuala Lumpur. Before we start our lesson for today, do you have your notebook and pen with you? If you do, then let's get started. Today, we are going to learn about ratio, rates and proportion. You have already learned these three concepts separately. Now, we will apply ratios, rates and proportions as we solve some problems. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to First, determine the relationship between percentage and ratios. Second, Determine the percentage of a quantity by applying the concept of proportions. And finally, you should be able to solve problems involving relationships between ratios, rates and proportions with percentages, fractions and decimals. Pupils, this is my fruit basket. I received it from my friend Anna. Let's see what types of fruits are in the basket. There are red apples and green apples. Did you know an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Let's count the number of red and green apples that are in the basket. We have two red apples and three green apples. Now pupils, can you tell me the ratio of red apples to green apples here? Yes, correct! The ratio of red apples to green apples is 2 to 3. And we can write this in a fractional form as 2 over 3. Okay, well done! Now. What is the percentage of red apples in the basket? How do we calculate the percentage? Here are two red apples from a total of five apples. Thus, we can write the ratio between red apples and the total fruits as 2 to 5, which can also be written in fractional form 2 over 5. The fraction can be expressed in terms of percentage by multiplying the fraction with 100% and you will get 40%. So pupils, let's look at this question to understand more on the relationship between percentages and ratio. There are 36 sweets to be given to Ahmad, Balu and Chong. The ratio of sweets given to Ahmad and Balu is 3 to 2. Balu received half of the number of sweets given to Chong. How many sweets are received by Ahmad, Balu and Chong? Express your answers in fractions. Let A, B and C represent Ahmad, Balu and Chong. Write down the details given from the question. The ratio of Ahmad's sweets to Balu's sweets, which is A to B, is equal to 3 to 2. And the ratio of Balu's sweets to Chong's sweets is 1 to 2. Now, we are going to write all this information in the form of a ratio. That is, A to B to C. And transfer the information of the respective ratio correctly. A to B is 3 to to 2 or 3 over 2 and B to C 
is 1 to 2 or 1 over 2. Upon aligning the numbers according to the ratios, we can see clearly that B has two overlapping values. Thus, we find the relationship between the two values of B. In the first ratio, A to B, the value of part B is 2. And in the second ratio, B to C, the value of part B is 1. Now, in order to write B in both ratios with the same number, we need to multiply 1 by 2. Since 1 is the value of B, we multiply it by 2. Hence, the partner ratio also needs to be multiplied by 2. Thus, the value of C, which is 2, will also be multiplied by 2. We will get a new value for C, which is 4. So, the equivalent ratio for 1 to 2 is 2 to 4. Upon changing the value of B in both ratios to the same number, we can now rewrite the ratio of the three parts with the new values. A, 2B, 2C, you will get 3 to 2 to 4. Once we get the ratios between the three unknowns, we can now proceed with the calculation required by writing the ratios in the fractional forms. The total portions in the ratio is 3 plus 2 plus 4, which equals to 9. The sweets received by Ahmad are three parts, from a total of nine parts which can be written as 3 to 9. Thus, we can write in fraction as 3 over 9. So now, let's solve the problem. How many sweets did Ahmad receive? 3 over 9 times 36 sweets in total. So Ahmad received 12 sweets. As we know, the percentage is 3 over 9 parts per 100. So, to find the percentage of Ahmad as represented in fraction, 3 over 9, we multiply with 100%, we get 33.33% for Ahmad. Next, how many sweets did Balu receive? 2 over 9, times 36 sweets in total, we could see that Balu received 8 sweets. To find the percentage of Balu's sweets, we take 2 over 9 and multiply it with 100%. The answer will be 22.22% for Balu's sweets. Finally, how many sweets did Chong receive? Can you try it by yourself? Yes, great! So the solution is 4 over 9 times with 36 sweets in total. Chong receives 16 sweets. To find the percentage of Chong, which is 4 over 9, we multiply this with 100%, then we will get 44.45% for Chong. Now pupils, let's determine the percentage of a quantity by applying the concept of proportions. Here is an example for you. At a sales carnival, Mei Lin chooses a dress from a rack which displays 45% price reduction. The original price of the dress is 
Ringgit Malaysia 85. When Maylin scans the price tag of the dress, the scanner shows that the price is Ringgit Malaysia 57 and 80 cents. By applying the concept of proportion, determine whether this percentage discount corresponds to the percentage reduction display. Give a reason for your answer. Pupils, let's solve this together. First, determine the percentage discount of the original price by representing it with unknown P. Write a ratio comparing the selling price to the original price in the form of proportion as shown here. P over 100 is equivalent to the selling price over the original price. Then, substitute the respective values accordingly where P over 100 is equivalent to the selling price value which is 57.80 over the original price value, which is 85. We are going to solve this proportion using the cross multiplication method. 85 multiplied by unknown P is equivalent to 57.80 multiplied by 100. As you solve it, the value of P is 68. This indicates that the selling price is 68% of its original price. To know the percentage of the discount, we will subtract 68% out of 100%, so the percentage discount is 32%. From here, we can draw the conclusion that the percentage obtained by Maylin is less than the percentage discount reduction displayed. So pupils, what you have learned today can actually be applied in solving problems in daily life. Let's look at some examples of problem solving. The ratio of the number of cars to the number of vans in a car park is 16 to 13. If there are 112 cars, what is the percentage of vans in the car park? The whole car park consists of 16 parts of cars and 13 parts of vans. If the 16 parts of cars are 112, let's find the value for one part. 112 over 16 equals to 7, which means one part represents 7 cars. From the problem, we know there are 13 parts of vans. We will multiply the 13 parts by 7, which equals to 91 vans. To obtain the percentage of vans in the car park, we can do as follows. The number of vans, which is 91, is divided by the total number of cars and vans in the car park, which is 203 and then multiplied by 100%. Thus, the percentage of vans in the car park is 44.83%. A chemistry book contains two parts, namely basic and advanced in a 5 to 2 ratio. What is the number of pages for each section if the book contains 560 pages. Express your answer in fraction.
here is the solution to this problem. This chemistry book contains 560 pages. Five parts of basic and two parts of advanced. The total parts of this book is seven. Can you show me how we get the number seven? Yes, seven is derived from the addition of five and two in the given ratio, which represent five parts of basic and two parts of advanced. Just imagine that we have seven parts in 560 pages. Let's find the number of pages for one part. 560 over 7 equals to 80, which means one part represents 80 pages. So, five parts for basic content of the book means five parts times 80 pages, which is equal to 400 pages. Meanwhile, for advanced, two parts times 80 equals 160 pages. How do we represent this in fractions? For advanced, we get 160 pages over 560 pages. 160 over 560 is equivalent to 2 over 7 in the simplest form. Meanwhile, for the basics, we get 400 pages over 560 pages, which is the total pages of the book. 400 over 560 is equivalent to 5 over 7 in the simplest form. Let us move on to the next example. Maggie mixes 2 litres of orange cordial into 15 litres of water to make some orange drinks. Rani mixes 3 litres of the same cordial into 22 litres of water. Whose orange juice is more concentrated? Let's solve this together. The two orange drinks can be written in a ratio form which is the ratio of cordial to water. Maggie's orange drink is 2 to 15. Rani's orange juice is 3 to 22. The two ratios can be written as 2 over 15 and 3 over 22. How do we compare the values of fractions? Yes, to determine which fraction has the higher value, normally we would convert them into decimals. Let's use a calculator to do the conversion. Press 2 over 15 on your calculator. You will get 0.1333. Similarly, 3 over 22 equals to 0 0.1364. So, comparing between 0 0.1333 and 0 0.1364, which number has the higher value? Which orange juice is more concentrated? Yes. 0.1364 has a higher value than 0.1333. Hence, we can say that Rani's orange drink is more concentrated. So pupils, now it's your turn to answer questions. Are you ready? Here is the question. Nadia bought 90 pieces of biscuits. She gave three-fifths of the biscuits to her friends and 18 biscuits to her brother. Find the percentage of the biscuits remaining with Nadia 
express your answer in decimal. Pupils, can you figure it out? Let's do it together. First, we start by calculating the number of biscuits Nadia gave to her friends. Out of 90 biscuits, 3 out of 5 parts were given to her friends. For your information, 3 fifths means 3 over 5. To find the number of biscuits, 3 over 5 is multiplied with the total number of biscuits Nadia initially had, which is 90. From this, we can know that Nadia gave 54 biscuits to her friends. Now, we will move on to calculating the number of biscuits remaining with Nadia after she had given 54 biscuits to her friends and 18 biscuits to her brother. The total number of biscuits given out by Nadia to her friends and brother is 72 biscuits. How did we get 72? Yes, indeed! 54 plus 18 equals to 72. Thus, the number of biscuits remaining with Nadia are 90 biscuits minus 72 biscuits, which are 18 biscuits. Now, to calculate the percentage of biscuits remaining with Nadia, 18 out of 90 biscuits, written as 18 over 90 in fraction form, is multiplied by 100%. This will give us 20%. 20% is equivalent to 0.2 in decimal form. Okay, pupils, we are going to do a final question before the session ends. Here is the question. There are 40 passengers on a bus. At the next bus stop, 8 passengers got off and 18 passengers got in the bus. Question A. By applying the concept of proportion, determine the percentage of the passengers who got off the bus compared to the number of passengers who were originally on the bus. Question B. What is the ratio of the passengers who got in the bus at the bus stop compared to the new total number of passengers in the bus? So, pupils, can you figure it out? Let's take a closer look at question A. To solve this question, let X be the representation for the percentage of passengers who got off. Then, write the ratio of comparison between the percentage of the passengers who got off the bus compared to the number of passengers originally on the bus as shown here. Passengers who got off the bus over the total passengers in the bus is equivalent to 8 over 40. So, using the concept of proportion, let's solve this using the cross multiplication method. 8 over 40 is equivalent to x over 100. Multiply both parts by 2.5, which is the lowest common multiple of 8 and 40. Thus, x is 8 multiplied by 2.5. and is equal to 20. Hence, the percentage of the passengers who got off is 20%. Now, let's look at question B. Based on the question, the number of the passengers who got in the bus is 18. The new total number of the passengers in the bus is calculated by taking the 40 initial passengers in the bus, subtract with the 8 passengers who got off, 
And then we add the 18 passengers who got in the bus at the bus stop. So, the new total number of passengers in the bus is 50. Let's write it in the form of a ratio comparison between the ratio of passengers who got in the bus to the new total passengers in the bus. We will get 18 to 50. Now, let's find the highest common factor for the number 18 and 50. Divide both parts by 2 which is the highest common factor of 18 and 50. In the end, the simplest form of ratio of the passengers who got in the bus at the bus stop compared to the new total number of passengers in the bus is 9 to 25. Pupils, we have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you and goodbye!